got him. Hey, this is Richard with Salt Strong, and today I want to go over a couple quick tips that are going to help you locate and catch redfish on a high tide. So this is one of my favorite ways to catch redfish, and even though there's going to be a lot more water, these fish actually can be pretty predictable when it comes to the type of areas that they're going to be in. So the first type of area that I want to go over for locating redfish at a higher tide is going to be a grass line. So you can find redfish on a multitude of different types of grass lines. However, my personal favorites are gonna be ones that have a little bit of a steeper bank usually, and also ones that have good current flow nearby. So a lot of times this is gonna be, you know, areas that have a larger body of water next to it, whether that's a main creek system, you know, going into the marsh or even the ICW like I have here. Now, my favorite time to target these redfish is just right around the time where the water starts to get into the grass, just enough to where those bait fish and those small crustaceans can actually get in there and hide, but it's not quite enough water yet for those redfish to go in there and actually hunt. During this time period, you know, those redfish are typically hugging really close to the banks. You know, they're cruising up and down, picking off small bait fish and crustaceans along the way. So I've noticed as well during this portion of the tide cycle, you know, it's one of the best times to really just fish hard and cover water. This isn't a time where you want to sit down and have a sandwich. You know, right now these fish are, you know, pretty aggressive and they're fired up and they're usually moving pretty quickly as well. So this is a great time where you can get a good shot at some reaction bites along the way. So another key thing to think about as well when fishing these grass shorelines is looking for the higher probability zones within that bank. So, you know, this can be a small grass point, you know, on the edges of small coves or anything really that just breaks up that kind of linear shoreline. Sometimes I will even make more than one cast to these high probability zones and often it does pay off. Just as you can see here, that's exactly what I did. I actually threw twice at this grass point and I ended up with a nice red. Got him. So now as that water starts moving into that grass, just enough where those fish can get in there and actually start hunting, don't be afraid to throw on a weedless lure, something such as a spoon or a weedless jerk shad. You know, many times, you know, these fish are actually several feet or even more into the grass. So I personally like throwing it into the grass sometimes, you know, even 10 feet or more. Uh, you know, and then slowly pulling it through the grass. And this is often when the fish will pick it up and take your lure. On this clip here, I unfortunately didn't get the cast in the picture. However, I do want you to know I did throw several feet into the grass just off to the right of the screen, and I did end up taking this nice redfish with an Aqua Dream spoon. Gotcha. Okay guys, so my second tip on where to find redfish at high tide is actually going to be on the tidal flats. So these are areas that are actually dry during most of the tide cycle. So when it's enough water for these redfish to get onto these flats, you know, they're really in a race against time to eat as much as they possibly can before that water starts moving off and pushes them back off the flat. So these flats are often, you know, the most plentiful with food as well, you know, such as your crabs and your shrimp and other bait fish that are really trying to escape into the shallows and get away from predators. And if you have a shallow water craft, such as a kayak or a skip, you can actually get onto these shallow flats for a short time and fish. 
Um, if you have a deeper, you know, draft boat, you can actually still effectively fish these areas because these fish do like to have a quick escape route. And that also usually consists of a deeper creek or channel that's just adjacent to the flat. So if you see, I'm actually in some deeper water here, roughly four feet or so, and I'm still fishing the flat effectively. And unfortunately I did lose this nice red fish, but it does go to show you can still fish these areas from a larger boat as well. And what's also great about fishing these flats is you can often have some very good sight fishing opportunities as well, even in murkier water, because a lot of times it's only a foot or so of water that's actually able to cover these flats. So a lot of times you can still see the pushes and wakes from these redfish. Now this day I was able to actually see this redfish cruising and all I had to do was drop the Alabama leprechaun right down in front of this fish and I was hooked up shortly after. Got him. Oh, that was sweet. Alright, so that's it for today guys. Hopefully you found these tips helpful and if you also like to fish for reds at high tide or have any questions, please be sure to leave them in the comments below. And if you'd like to know more about the lures that I use in this video, be sure to check them out on our shop page at fishstrong.com. And if you're new to Salt Strong, just know that we're the best online fishing club in America because we literally guarantee that you will catch more fish while saving time and money. We do this by providing you with our premium education, an exclusive online fishing community, and huge discounts on the best tackle for saltwater anglers. To learn more, go to saltstrong.com. We hope to see you in the Insider Club family soon.